Okay, I pop the uh, front door cover off and then just take this, I don't know if I mentioned this before, just take this liner out of the way just so you can get to the wires and um, just connect them. Uh, like all the rest, take all these off and then, uh, and then we'll get to the inner panel. All right, so we've got the front door marked, the window marked, right? And we're gonna take out the rear bolt first and then and then loosen um, this bolt um, and then lift the window out. All right, so what I noticed is this bolt, like even after you loosen it up, it doesn't really wanna come out, you know? So this thing, really helps with that it's a fish kind of thing it's got a end on it like that and you can stick that in there and get to the bolt Let's see if I can catch it on camera All right, so on this guy, we took off all these 12 bolts around the outside. And then we took off these two bolts here um, that really hold that window housing solidly in place. Um, and then these kind of fold this up against the door tight. Um, and now this is all ready to come off. So it's kind of pull it out. I think if it's like the other one, it's kind of a push it up and then pull it down and it'll come out all right so I just got the panel out and it was very much one of you had to lift the panel a little bit up and then it unlocked and then it came out otherwise you're trying to pry this side apart pry it off over here and it just doesn't want to come it something in there unlatches when you lift it up a little bit and then bring it down and then and then out this way you know kind of down and out where that thing fits in um but it comes right out okay so like on the back door that thing's taped in such a way that it's pulling the wire towards the uh the door hinge a little bit just to relieve pressure um this one's easier because you don't have to wire up that um connector and all that but um still we got to cut that tape off of there so we can fish our wire through and then we'll tape it up the same way like that where it's kind of keeping it tucked up there where you pull those tabs back and tape it so it's pulling the wire towards the hinge a little bit all right so like before I just fish this wire through there I use this uh, synthetic premium wax to and I get that thing slicked up so it go through the through all that conduit and then out the other side right there. So now we'll pull the wire through and uh, move on. So ultimately in fishing this wire through here, um, I had to take off this um, you know rubber piece to get it to come through. But it's coming through now. It's all taped up there and. Um, Stick that through there and push it back together and our wire will come out over here. Okay, now we're unbolting the uh, the handle. Um, let's see, let's get to this one over here. Yeah, it's this one that's uh, longer. The one in the back. So I kind of use this contraption. You can use whatever extension you want, but the one at the lower, lower in the rear of these three um, is a bit longer. So it's just three bolts to undo to get the handle out. And then we'll put, uh, swap over the parts for the handle and then put the handle in. Yeah, so this uh, handle just backs straight out. I've got it. And I'm holding on to it there, but it just backs right out. There's two little tabs right there, uh, right there, that it kind of fits into. 
So pay attention to those, and especially when you're putting the handle, the new handle back in, don't smart it up, you know, by scrubbing it on these two tabs. Okay, so our wires run through, and then um, we plugged into the ECU over there. Swapped our components across. I videotaped that one, so I'll do it again. It's really simple. You know, you just uh, unscrew this guy. You know, I've got the CN type, so I don't need the washer or the instructions. And then, uh, and then you put this piece in there. It doesn't say that in the instructions, but you need to, you know, tab that out and put put it in over here in a new one. But uh, then we plug it in. We've got to lift off, so we're good to go to keep moving on. Okay, so we got that taped up in there real good. Um, you know, like the way I was talking about it, you know, so you're pulling back on that wire just a little bit. And I actually did a little extra tape just because there could be some moisture down here. So um, didn't want water to accumulate anywhere in that thing where it's open. Um, yeah, so all taped up there. I'm going to leave the wire down here for now and then go ahead and get the lock out. And, um, and then I'll run this wire back to the back to the handle so I disconnected it for now and just laid it down in here and um and next we'll get the lock out and then we'll put the motor in and the new lock and um get the harness in for that and that's really not a difficult part of this whole thing you know that's um just not hard part there's just not a lot of risk right there and um we'll get this stuff bolted up and run another test so i found you know this lock it's always been tough getting this thing out you know or, or the uh, the connector rather at the top and so this time i decided to leave the connector in and i'm kind of just mocking it up here but so i left the connector well, i left the lock in rather right like that where's the connector at so the connector's in here. Yeah, so I left the connector in there. And then I got at it with this tool and just popped this back, that tab back, and then just put pressure on that tab and it popped out. That seemed to be a pretty good way to do it. Um, instead of trying to do it with your fingers. Um, you know, since it's mounted in the door, that's keeping it stationary. And then I was, that seemed to work pretty well. So anyhow, just a better way to do it. Okay, when you route the cable for the motor, make sure it's kind of sitting in the bottom and it's got a nice run, right? So it's going straight up in there like that. And that's, um, that's the motor cable down here that runs right up like that there it is right there and then it's got some styrofoam on it down here but it shouldn't be any kinks in it right because that that cable is gonna get actuated over and over every time you open the door it's this motor that's kicking and pulling the cable and releasing the latch up here so it's not like you know this emergency release cable it's not like you're gonna kink this either but it's not used that often but anyhow you don't want to route it like up over this and then back down and up. You want a nice smooth run. Okay, so putting this mount together is pretty easy. You just put these rubber mounts in there like that. They just slot right in there. And then um, we put it, push these into the, the metal uh, bracket. All right, so that's what that looks like in the bracket. And then this just goes right down in here. And it's right up in these, right like that. So what I'm going to do is, since it's pushing on that wire right there, I'm going to put some extra tape right there. Because <clears throat> that wire is being pushed up over the bracket. And I don't want that to wear through right there. The uh, <clears throat> the little wing nut goes on the bottom, and it's just tough to get started. But once you get it started, you know, it threads right in. But um, so the bolt goes on the top, wing nuts on the bottom, um, and yeah, 
it's just a little tough to get going because it's a wing nut but um once you get it going i hand tighten it and then i give it a little extra twist with the pliers all right so now i'm gonna hook the uh harness up to the motor and as with all these plugs um, that come with this harness they don't just go in any way they slot in so there's a tooth there um, and from my direction it's to the upper left you know in there so I just check that out to make sure that I'm pushing it in the right way so even though this thing's facing away from me that's not really what you want to look at you just want to look and see which way it goes in you know, by looking at the teeth on that thing. All right, let's check it again. Let's see. Upper left. Hmm. Right, upper left there. And then on this thing. Yeah. Upper left. It's slotted for sure. Okay, that's the way it goes, you know, and, you know, might not be the same depending on what door you're, what side you're doing. It might, you know, just look at that thing and see how it keys in there. And then there's a little clip, you know, a little push pin over here. You just push that in and it's secure. So you're all set. All right. So there's your hot and your ground wire. Let me plug this guy together, right? And we'll get all these up out of the way. We're just getting everything plugged in for now. So I've got the wiring harness plugged in. Everything's set to go. Um, so now we'll just do another test to make sure it works. All right. Good. And then, yeah, and it latches all by itself. Good. So that's all good, one more time. Good. And then you can hear it cycling. It made a louder noise before, but that was because it had, it was actually in the latched position, but it's good. Do it as many times as you want. You know, it doesn't hurt. I mean, do this over and over because you really want to know if it works, you know, before you start putting things back together. So like when I'm walking around here, I'm just hitting these things. Make sure they're working good, you know, before we put all the tools away, right? Make sure it's closing upright and everything. Looking good. And uh, even the manual function, you know, I'm checking that. I'm checking the, the actual, you know, interior opener. It's, you should hear a click. So, all right, looking good. Um, next thing is going to be, yeah, next thing's going to be the wires. Um, getting everything um, up and out of the way. Okay, filming this real good. So this is how we've got the the cables wired up and tucked away so that the window doesn't hit. Okay, that one runs right up like that. And these guys are all tucked up like that. Pretty tight, so we'll see if that works. All right, we've got all of these bolts back in all the way around. None left over. And um, I'm gonna go back and tighten these two at the top a little bit more. And I'm gonna go around and tighten all the rest by hand. So using the automatic tool, I didn't go super tight. And I'm not going super tight anyway. And this, yeah, this is what's holding that window in place pretty big bolt it's metal on metal so 
I'm gonna go a little harder on that. And then this one, just uh, get that in the frame, you know, going like, you know, it's a small socket and just doing it pretty tight, but not super tight. All right, then we're gonna go around and check out all these guys. Okay, double checking these to make sure they're good. Just a little more. And that's plastic, you know, so we're not going too tight on that, really. You know, there we go. Definitely don't want to break it. It's got a gasket back there behind it, so, you know, you're just really smushing that gasket. There we go. All right, so, you know, we've got the, we got the wire, we've got the panel on, so next I'm gonna, before I put the window in, I'm just kind of getting this up out of the way, put the window in first, but, I guess my point is, is, you know, it's pretty straightforward. When you start putting it, snapping these things up here, um, you know, you're just following the same pattern. And by the time you put the snaps in, you know, the plugs are pretty self-evident, right? It's just not that complicated. I don't even have to look at the drawing and put it back together. And that plug goes right there, so on and so forth, right? Um, let's put them in. In, bring it home. This is uh, all right. So, look at this guy. This is a good example of something where you need to just take your time, right? It looks like it goes that way, right? No question about it. It's kind of bent that way, and everything like that's where it was before. But we're gonna double check it just to be sure. So, there's a groove right there keep a little problem a little problem right I mean it's possible it could go that way right so let's see where's the groove all right all right the grooves forward so it's just like what it looks like which is just wanted to be double sure and you know with these I don't force them if it doesn't seem like it wants to go then check it and then we'll pop that tab up all set all right, so all those are in. We're gonna plug the speaker in right here. There we go. And um, plug this guy in, two hands. All right, all plugged in, and that one goes into a little harness too. All right, so we're looking good. So just don't wanna step on these, right? Get them up out of the way when I'm doing stuff. All right, so now we'll put the window in. So we're not gonna put the rubber on until we get the window in. I think it's instructions say to do it that way, and obviously I've got my tape on here, so I wouldn't do that, right? Just gonna put it back in the way we took it out. Okay, so I just set the glass in there. Rubber gloves on, clear your path for the most part. Don't want to trip the glass, break the glass, and you got to buy new glass. Um, yeah, and as I was putting it in, I followed this line, right? So I got it, the window started and just tracked down that line. That helped me get the angle right. And then obviously it's going in those two grooves, you know, one in the front and the one in the back. And, um, and the front window fits more snugly, you know, it's, uh, you know, a tighter fit and there's, I guess, more to it uh, with the front window than there is with the rear window. But anyhow, it went right in. I'm going to line it up perfect and um, tighten it down a little bit. All right, we got the glass in lined up perfect. And you can do this any way you want as long as you do it the same way both times. So when I do it, I've got my left eye shut and I'm on my knees looking at it with 
my head level. So if you were looking through my right eye, that's what you would see right there. You know, um, you know, you're just lining that edge of that tape right up, and um, seems to be working pretty well using that method. All right, so we're gonna put this plastic strip back in. Let me just get it started down on the end over here. Uh, fits in the groove. And then over here. All right, two hands. Okay, the way to do this, get this rubber on is sit it up there first, right? And then get it to where that, you know, press it down. All right, we got that all back in. And, um, you know, you know you got it right when these little orange tabs on the other side here are lined up right. You know, like they can only, they all three pop in. So if they're not going right in and you're really having to stretch this thing, then you don't have it down far enough. So it should be sitting down firm. And also check this side of the seal to make sure it's not doubled over anything. I had a spot where it was kind of curled up a little bit and I was able to use a plastic tool, a really narrow one to kind of tease it over. But, you know, cause this will fit right down in there like that. And I had a spot over here where it was curled over a little bit. But, um, you know, if it's, I wouldn't put too much pressure on it cause you can tear this stuff and then you gotta get another one and and all that and um you know when you can just pop the glass out again and put it back in um anyhow it worked out though uh so we got the glass back in we've got the seal back on and um this is wired up and now we're ready to put this outer cover back on and don't forget to put the sound barrier, that white piece, um, the curtain in there when you do it. All right, oh, and also we gotta put these rubber pieces back in. So let's do that, we got four of them. Got one here. All right, simple enough, right? I mean, these guys just all pop in. Um, I'm gonna use two hands to do this. All right, so it wouldn't go in there because it's not one of the holes that gets covered up. I think that's where the, you know, the the outer cover kind of something. I'm not sure what that is actually, but anyhow, the hole you're you're covering back up this one, this one, this one, and this one, and um, and uh, glancing over at what's left occasionally to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. Looking good. All right, so time to put the cover on. Okay, so when you're putting this back on, um, you know, you slot it in on the top. So right now it's just sitting in here kind of loose. And you want to look after you kind of get it up there and make sure you're going in the hole, you know? Because uh, like when I first did it, it was to the left a little bit and it wasn't wanting to go down. And it was really just that it needed to be pushed to the right just a little bit. But um, yeah, once you've got it all lined up, then you can just push it back in and then we'll put the three bolts back in here, the one on the back, put the tweeter back on and then this door's done. And then we'll run the window a couple of times, give it a really good test. Okay, to get that wire back up in there I just stuck so I'm looking at the tweeter just put my little plastic pry tool in there a little bit this whole thing's rubber right here you know and then just I was able to push this right up in there and pull it out like that just pull the plastic out they're all set just put it around there Just 
just like that. All right, so when you're putting this tweeter back on, just remember that it clips in on the top. You gotta get that, you know, get it over that clip. And then you're pushing down, and just make sure it's lined up in the front right there. And then push down, and you should hear it pop back here and pop back here, and you shouldn't be able to lift it up at all. It's in there pretty tight, because this you know door takes a lot of abuse. Um, and don't push too hard on this screen stuff, or you'll stretch it, you know. Um, anyhow, it wasn't too hard. Okay, so I got the carpet pushed back up in there. If you recall, you know, I had some tape back up under there and everything, and, um, taping all that wire down and this wire just tucked up in there. I put one zip tie in there. I didn't want to do too much, you know, cause it's not going anywhere. I don't want to stress the wire too much. There's, you know, it's packaged up in there with all the other wires. Let me put this little guy back on there. And, um, and then we've got the cover that goes up under there and the side panels and all that. And then we'll move to the other side. Got all those pieces in, they just pop right in. You start back here, go that way. And then there's one of those pop tabs, you push that in right there. And then this guy, tab in the bottom. And then make sure you got it tucked up in here. And then you give it a push and you're good. Um, I think these side ones come out. I didn't have to take those out for any reason. Um, yeah, and now we're ready to put the door seal in. Uh, and I always, I think I mentioned this before, but I put the put the seam right back where the other one was. I don't know if it makes a difference. I think these things over time, they tend to take the shape of the door. And so it's good to have the, you know, whatever part of that rubber was up in this tight corner. If you use that fit it the same way, then um, it's probably gonna stay a little better. So that's what I do. Yeah, so as far as getting this seam back on, there's nothing really to it. You just make sure you got it lined up and take your time. You know, don't pinch it. Get it tucked in the corners real good as you go. You know, so you don't have a bubble in the middle when you get done. And, uh, and it all goes in pretty easily. And I put the seam right back where it was before. Like all right, I'm gonna push this down real good and then go all around the outside and make sure you got it in good because you know the window fits to this thing, so you want that in there, right? Don't want any leaks or anything like that. Yeah. It's all looking pretty good, but I can feel it, you know, I can feel a few spots that came up a little bit. You know, so it's good to go around it real good. Like that. All right, so that's good. We got a nice fit on the window. Matches the other side. And it all looks good. And, uh, all right, so the first time you do this, of course, it's soft closed now. But do it real easy. And when the window, the window, when the door closes, it comes right near that edge, you know. Almost looks like it's gonna hit this glass part over here, but it doesn't. And it's it's came that way, you know? But then when it closes, it seals up good and goes right up there. Um, so, seems to be engineered pretty well. Um, yeah, so this is good. So I'm gonna do it a couple of times easy before I go to like shutting the door. I wanna see it go without any problems. Do it a bunch of times. Back in a sec. All right, now what do I do? Good. All right. Good.
So I noticed when that window rides up, it goes up and it looks like it goes to the back a little bit, right? Like, you know, like it snugs up, it goes almost like the back comes up first a little bit and then it rides back. So let's look at the other side, make sure it does the same thing. Because if it doesn't, that could be an indication that that track is loose or something. But that's the way it does. But I can see it already. Yeah, it kind of. Yeah. Yep kind of fits up there, snugs up like a glove. Hard to tell actually, you know, but maybe it's just my imagination, but um, yeah, I think it's working just fine. All right, and we had a noise in that right front door, so I'm gonna go back and check that out. That'll be the last thing. I'll probably have to take that one apart again. It looks like it's working fine. Let's get in the car and run the window down. Nice. Good. Looking good, so we can put this back together over here and then um, shouldn't take too long and then put the some of that trim back and then we can if I have to pop that door off because um, that it's making a little bit noise over there um, I need to check that out might have to do that but um, I can go ahead and put all this back okay I think I pointed this out uh, when I took it out, but um, when you put this panel back in down by the footwell next to the gas and the brake, the, there's a light here that's got to be plugged in. There's an opening there. I don't know what the heck that's for, but nothing goes in there. And then there's this. You got to put that guy back in. Um, and then there's a push pin here. And there's one over here. But the one in the middle is a screw. So if you try to put a push pin back in there, it's not gonna go. It's just a screw. And, um, you know, there it is. And it's a Torx 15 screw. All right, I didn't videotape it, but I got, you know, got the wires tucked back up in here and put the panels back. All that stuff just snaps into place. The wires are pretty tight, right? So. As I suspected, there was just enough wire get, to get to the left rear and, and do it the way that I did it, tucking everything up tight. Um, so, you know, it's a bit it's a bit tight in here. Uh, the way I had to put it, I couldn't kind of, I didn't have enough wire to kind of really put it away, up and out of the way. So it's tucked in behind all this. Um, but I don't think that's going to hurt a thing. You know, it's fine. Um, maybe it's just me. I would have rather have like zip tied way up out of the way, but, um, but there was enough cable, but there was enough cable, um, on the right side and left side to get, you know, just to almost exactly right here. So just word to the wise, you know, as you're running the wire from the doors to the ECU, you know, um, you know, spool you know plan on having your extra wire at the ecu so use whatever you need to from the door but lead and lead the wire back over the extra wire back over to the ecu all right so now last thing is i'm going to take this door back apart and i would show you what's going on with it but i don't want to 
damage anything, you know, because I can hear a noise. When the window gets to the very bottom state, I can hear a noise that's not normal, like it's it's tapping something. And that'll wear out over time. So we're gonna pull this panel off. Not a big deal, we know how to do that. And then get to the inner panel. And uh, unfortunately, I gotta take the window out and all that too. Um, and then check those wires. Um, left side's looking good, so that's good. That's really great, because we videotaped all that. So I know that the wires can be tucked up enough to stay out of the way of the glass. Um, and uh, so took lots of pictures and video of that side when I did it. So, all right, we'll get to this door and, um, and get that fixed and then we'll be done. Okay, since I'm back in this door, all right, so here's how you pop this guy off. I've got a nice, edge on this tool I've got and uh, it just goes right in there pops right out I don't know if you saw that but right, one more time all right so you pop that in there and came right out All right, it's done. You know, everything's working. I redid that front right door and um, everything's good. Just like tightened up the cables a little bit. Must've been something in there touching. And uh, as you can see, it works great. You know, pretty much spot on. Um, still trying to open the doors the old way. But um, yeah, there's like, um, it's, you can see it's pretty pretty darn silent you know there's a little bit of creaking like but this thing like i mean it's almost inaudible you know and i think there's a little creak just when this thing comes up and rides through here but it's not even i won't even, I won't even hear it on the camera hardly uh yeah so it's all working great final thoughts this isn't the kind of thing you're gonna get done in one weekend, you know. Just testing it real good before I put the tools away. Uh, it took me about 60 hours to do this. Um, the car cuts on and off, like so it goes to sleep. And um, don't get excited. All you gotta do is press the brake pedal, that'll bring the car back to life and turn it back on. Uh, it does weird things when the doors are open and it goes to sleep. Um, the only thing that I noticed is, is that the soft close locks don't, or the la soft close latches don't work when it's asleep. These will work because I'm, I'm guessing these, you know, obviously these, you know, we connected the power to that lithium battery up front directly. So that kind of makes sense. You want to be able to open a door whether the car's asleep or not. But then once you open it, it wakes up. But if you leave it like this open for a long time, and then it goes to sleep like that and you go to soft close it. If you go to close it, it will close correctly and, and pull the window up, but you know, it'll, it won't soft close if it's, if it's asleep. Um, what else, you know, you expect to expect to fail. You know, you're going to have to take, you're not going to nail every one of these doors, especially the rear ones with those pin connectors. That's probably the hardest spot. And you know, it's okay. You know, if a window doesn't line up or something like that, um, you know, try to set yourself up for success, take your time. But um, chances are, you know, I've had, I had to re retrace my steps a couple of times, you know. Um, what else? Yeah, that's about it. You need the right tools. Got to have a Torx. I would definitely recommend, you know, having the right kind of tools for this job. This thing I think was essential sometimes because you get a bolt that just doesn't want to come out. And if you don't have something like this, it would just be crazy. I might, you might spend forever trying to get, tease that bolt out of one of those slots. Um, you know, I wound up using a micrometer to check the window gap, but you don't need that really. Um, definitely need a voltmeter, a multimeter to test your, uh, I just noticed I left my, 
thing off. You're gonna need a, a, a multimeter to test for continuity if your uh, pin fails. And, and I wound up doing that on both of them. The second one, I don't think it actually failed. I think I just had a loose connection at the ECU ultimately, but um, uh, yeah. Anyhow, that's it, wrap.